Today I'm going to talk about how the k-means clustering algorithm works. and I'll use NaftaliHarris.com to help illustrate in a step-by-step -step fashion how the algorithm runs. The goal of k-means is to group similar data points together into a predefined number of clusters. We can say which data points are similar based on how far apart they are. The closer together two data points are, the more similar. The farther apart, the less similar. K-means works through the use of centroids, and centroids are just a term for the cluster's center. Therefore, the number of centroids that are created correspond to the number of clusters that will be created. In this illustration, you can see lots of small circles. These circles represent data points and exist in two-dimensional space. Think of the visualization as a graph, and these points lie on an x and y axis. This means each data point has its own numerical coordinates, and we can easily calculate a distance between any data points. As for the structure of these data points, it's obvious there are three distinct groups, and for that reason, I'm going to create three clusters. I'll do this by instantiating three different centroids. These centroids will be represented as large circles seen here. To be clear, a centroid isn't a data point. It's simply a representation of the cluster center. This first centroid is red. Second centroid is blue. And the third centroid is green. I'm choosing where the centroids are being placed in this example, but in practice, you can understand the centroids to be placed randomly. Notice that all data points are still white. In the next phase of this algorithm, each white data point will change to red, blue, or green. The data points will be assigned to its nearest centroid. Thus, if the nearest centroid is blue, the data point will turn blue. With that said, I'll run this step of the algorithm. You'll see that all of the data points have changed colors. Now that each data point has been assigned, we can calculate where the center of each cluster is and shift the centroid to that calculated center. So what you'll see is this red centroid here is going to shift towards the center of this red cluster and be about here. This blue centroid is going to shift down here and towards the center of the blue data points. And this green centroid will shift towards the center of these green data points. Now that the centroids have shifted, we have to reassign all of the data points to the closest centroid. So you can see all of these blue data points here are in green territory. They are closest to the green centroid. So in the next iteration, these blue data points are going to turn green. Now that the data points have been reassigned, we have to once again calculate the center of each cluster and shift the centroid to that calculated center. So once again, this blue centroid is going to shift further over here, this green centroid might shift just slightly over here, and this red centroid is going to stay exactly where it was. I'm going to quickly move through further iterations, and you'll see that further iterations don't change the clustering. When data points stop changing clusters and the centroids are no longer shifting, clustering is complete. 